Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Sing in Alleluia, Alleluia. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Sing in Alleluia, Alleluia. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, singing Alleluia, Alleluia. Let me see. <clears throat> 722. 722. <coughs> <coughs> Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. All his wonderful passion and purity make his spirit divine. All my being refined. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. When somebody has been so unkind to you, someone spoken that pierces you. Yeah. 
Psalm 4, reading in prayer, be 778. 778. <clears throat> <clears throat> be with me, Lord, I cannot live without Thee. I dare not try to take one step alone. I cannot bear the wounds of my foreigner. I need thy strength to lean myself upon. Be with me, Lord, and in the danger threatened. Storms of trials burst up of my head. In flashing seas leap everywhere about me. They cannot harm or make my heart afraid. Be with me, Lord, when loneliness o'ertakes me. When I must weep amid the fires of pain, and when shall come the hour of my departure, for worlds unknown, O Lord, be with me Good morning. The reading this morning will come from Psalms chapter 51, verses 1 through 11. Psalms chapter 51, verses 1 through 11. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my, transgress my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned, and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak, and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother convinced me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part you will make me known to wisdom. Make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness, that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. <coughs> Let's go to our garden, God in prayer. Our kind and merciful, all wise, knowing and loving Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that we have another opportunity to come together here and give you praise and give you all the glory that, that we can. We're so thankful for all the many blessings that you bestow upon us and we pray that you continue to bless us. We're just thankful for everything. We're thankful for your love. We're thankful for your mercy. We're thankful for Jesus. And, and we just pray that you would always be there for us. Guide us, guiding us in spirit and in truth. Heavenly Father, we pray for this congregation, and we, we pray for health and well-being. Uh, we pray for our spirit, and we pray that you would open our heart and prepare us for the message that's going to be spoken today, but also the message that is going to be uh, given, delivered in our meeting upcoming. And just keep our hearts open, Father, and, and prepare uh, our heart for your word and your will. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would uh, be with us now and forever. Be with the ones less fortunate. We pray that you would uh, bless them and heal them and heal us also, Father. Heavenly Father, we, we pray for the ones who are in this congregation and are traveling. We pray that you would keep them safe. 
We ask and we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would uh, be and bless the, all the missionaries around the world spreading your gospel. We pray that um, your gospel would be spread, it would be uh, achieved, and their efforts would be, would be made, would made, made good. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would strengthen us each and every day of our lives, and we pray that our, our lives would be built upon your, your promise and upon your love pray that you would forgive us and save us and be with us always now and forever this is our prayer in jesus christ's holy name amen I travel down a lonely road and no everybody with me on this one? Is that too low? Yeah. If I get this thing to go. I travel down a lonely road and no one seemed to care. The burden on my weary back had bowed me to despair. I often blame to Jesus how folks would treat me. And then I heard him say so tenderly. My feet were all so weary upon the Calvary road. The cross became so heavy. I fell beneath the load. Be faithful, weary pilgrim, the morning I can see. Just lift your cross and follow close to me. Oh Jesus, if I die upon the foreign field someday, would be no more than love thee, man, no less could I repay. No greater love at mortal man than for a friend to die. These are the words he gently spoke to me. If just a cup of water I place within your hand, then just a cup of water is all that I demand. But if my death to living, they can my glory see. I'll take my cross and follow close to thee. Talk lesson 662. See everyone this morning. Uh, they had to go to the bottom of the barrel to find someone to speak this morning. So I'm glad I'm it. <laughs> All right. Uh, the title of the lesson this morning is A Man After God's Own Heart. Now, what I want to do is talk about heart just a little bit here. The word heart occurs more than 900 times in the scriptures and almost never used in the literal sense except in Exodus 28, 29, and 30 which speaks of the breastplate uh, of Aaron that he was to have the judgment uh, on the, uh, of the children of Israel uh, on the breastplate over his heart. And now he's talking about this uh, thing that uh, pumps blood, you know, this pump that's in our chest. 
All the other times, it's talking about our mind, our soul, and our will. Okay, in Genesis uh, 6, 5, and 6 says, Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent and thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Verse 6, And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. In the Bible, all, em all emotions are experienced by the heart. Love Hate, according to Psalm 105 and 25, and 1 Peter 1 and 22. Joy and sorrow, Ecclesi Ecclesiastes 2.10, John 16.6. 6. Peace and bitterness, Ezekiel 27.31, Colossians 3.15. Courage and fear, Genesis 42.28 and Amos 2.16. In Matthew 22, 37, Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. All right, now, enough about heart. A man after God's own heart. David was born in 1040 B.C. and died in 970 B.C which made him about 70 or 71 years old, in which I was surprised to see that because people back in those days, you know, lived a lot longer than that. And there's several people here today that is older now than what, uh, what he was when, he, when David was when he died. And uh, he grew up in Bethlehem, a shepherd boy tending his father's sheep, he was youngest of eight boys, eight boys of Jesse, and he, he remembers his mother as God's maid servant in Psalm 116 and 16. And in 1 Samuel 8, Israel demands a king that they had been under the rule of judges, of course. So Samuel, being the last judge and the first prophet of Israel, in 1 Samuel 9, Saul was chosen by God to be the first king of Israel. He was son of Kish, and the scripture describes Saul, uh, the son, in 1 Samuel 9 and 2, as a choice and handsome son. There he was, more than, uh, there, there was not a more handsome person uh, than among the children of Israel. From his shoulders upward, he was taller than any of the people. Shoulders upward. So he could be seen you know, uh, about anywhere in the crowd because he was taller than anyone uh, during that time. In verse 3, uh, his father's donkeys were lost, so his father sent Saul to go hunt for the donkeys. And so for three days they didn't find the donkeys, but the Lord had sent Samuel the prophet um, to meet, us, meet Saul and anoint him king over Israel. In verse 20, Samuel tells Saul the donkeys have been found to do not worry. First Samuel 10, Saul was anointed king. Samuel took a, flash of, a flask of oil and poured it on Saul's head. And Samuel the prophet was to make the uh, burnt sacrifice before battle. In 1 Samuel uh, 13, Saul made an unlawful sacrifice. And, and uh, Saul said, uh, Samuel said to Saul, You have done foolishly. In verse 14, But now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart, and the Lord has commanded him to be commander over his people. You know, what Saul had done, he had offered a sacrifice. Samuel, the prophet, was the one that was supposed to make those sacrifices. So uh, Samuel didn't show up... Uh, to make that sacrifice, so Saul decided, okay, I'll just do it myself, which he was not allowed to do, and that cost him his kingship. First uh, Samuel 15, the Lord through Samuel told Saul to go attack Amalek because of what Amalek did to the Israel as they were coming out of Egypt. This is found in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 25, verses 17 through 19, and First Samuel 15 and 3. 
Uh, he says, Now go attack Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have. Do not spare them, but kill both man and woman, infant and nursing child, ox and sheep and camel and donkey. In verse 9, But Saul spared Agag, the king, and the best of the sheep and the oxen and the fatlings and the lambs and all that was good. In verse 13 and 14, Samuel went to Saul, and Saul said to him, Blessed are you of the Lord. I have performed the, the commandment of the Lord. But Samuel said, What then is this blading of the sheep that's in my ears and the lowing of the cattle and uh, of the oxen that I hear? So that was the sin that, uh, that, uh, that Saul did there. 1 Samuel 15 and, and 15, in part, uh, Saul said, for the, pe for the people spared the best of the sheep. He's blamed on the people now. The people uh, best of, uh, spared the best of the sheep and oxen to sacrifice to the Lord. He thought he'd get by with saying, well, okay, we're going to use these to sacrifice to God. Then Samuel said to Saul, be quiet, and I will tell you what the Lord said to me last night. And Saul said, speak on in verse 17. So Samuel said, when you were little, in your own eyes, you were not head of the tribes of Israel. And did not the Lord anoint you king over Israel? Now the Lord sent you on a mission and said, Utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they are consumed. In verse 19, it said, Why did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Verse 20, And Saul said to Samuel, But I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and gone on the mission on which the Lord sent me. But the people took the plunder, the sheep, the oxen, the best of things, which should have utterly destroyed to sacrifice to the Lord, your God in Gilgal. Samuel said, Behold, to obey is better and averse, better than sacrifice. In verse 23, Samuel told Saul, Because you have rejected the Lord, the word of the Lord, he also has rejected you from being king. Now, David enters, enters the picture, 1 Samuel 16. God sends Samuel to the house of Jesse uh, to, uh, to anoint a new king for Israel. Jesse had uh, made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. There was eight sons. Jesse had eight sons. And David was the youngest. In 1 Samuel 16 and 11, And Samuel said to Jesse, Are all the young men here? There remains yet the youngest, and there he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to, to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes. So he sent and they brought him, brought him in. And now he was ruddy, which means that he had a reddish complexion. And also, a, 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 his, his complexion was, was also called rosy, and, uh, which means that uh, he had a healthy, rosy, reddish color. He had bright eyes and good-looking, and the Lord said, Arise and on him, for he, this is the one. In verse 13 of 1 Samuel 16, The Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward, and verse 14, But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and a distressing evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. So he was, uh, was known, Saul was known as even being insane. He had all kinds of problems. And uh, this indicates here that, that the Lord had departed from Saul, and a distressing evil spirit from the Lord he, uh, that troubled him also. Romans one twenty eight, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind <coughs> to do those things which are not fitting. Saul's servants told Saul to let them sp seek out a man who is skilled in playing the harp. So the servant said he had seen uh, the son of Jesse play the harp, so they sent for David. And verse 21 says that Saul loved him greatly. Of course, we know that ch changed later. David was quite accomplished in musical instruments. They say especially the harp. 
And you know, it's always been said, I've uh, heard this all my life, that music soothes the savage beast. And you know, I've heard of uh, farmers uh, having music in their milk parlors where they, where they milk the cows. That helps the cows will give more milk. So music is important. And of course, God loves music. He loves uh, people to sing to him. I read them. Uh, I got a little book that is not very, very long uh, about the Amish called The Gentle People. And uh, they do not use any instrumental music in their worship. They sing, they said, because God has given us a voice to sing to him and no musical instruments is needed. And, uh, but they do have uh, entertainment with music, with instruments. And uh, they do have hoedowns and uh, several things like that. But uh, one thing I was surprised in seeing, too, was that the Amish baptized by pouring. And as strict as, strict as they are with the scriptures, that did surprise me, that they baptized by pouring. Okay. So Saul loved David greatly at that point. For Samuel 17, uh, David kills Goliath. And of course, we know that story about David and Goliath and uh, how, what the size of uh, Goliath was. Huge man. Uh, his spearhead that he used uh, weighed 17 to 18 pounds. And in 1 Samuel 8 and 7, the women sang and danced and said, Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. So Saul begins to be jealous, very jealous of David at that point in time. 1 Samuel 18 and, and 11, Saul threw a spear at David but David escaped. In verse 21, Saul gave Michael, his daughter, to David for a wife, hoping that he would uh, be a, that she would be a snare or bait for someone else to kill David. You know, Saul uh, promised the one that would kill Goliath he would give them one of his daughters as wife, which he did not give to David. He gave her to somebody else at that point in time. And also, they would be free from taxing the one that uh, would kill Goliath. So Saul went back on his word when David did the job for him. Okay, in 1 Samuel 19 and 1, Saul spoke to Jonathan and all his servants that they should kill David. So Jonathan, of course, Jonathan and David became very good friends and uh, it says that David even loved him more than anything. Uh, well, Jonathan helped, helped him out there. He warned David to be on guard. And also Michael, his wife, also warned him. In 1 Samuel 21, 10, David fled from Saul to Achish, uh, a king of Gath. And <laughs> that was quite a story there. Also, I'm going to... Let's, let's talk about David when he went to Gath there, trying, he's, uh, fleeing from Saul. The servants uh, of the king of Gath recognized David. And David pretended to be insane. He uh, scrubbed or scratched on the door of the gate, doors of the gate, and he slobbered, slob, slobia, let slobia go down into his beard. And uh, he played the madman. The king of Gath was afraid of David. And he said to his servant, look, you see this man's insane. Why have you brought him to me? Have I need of madmen? That you have brought this fellow to play the madman in my, in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? So David had to leave Gath. David uh, was 30 years old when he became king, and he reigned for 40 years. He reigned over Judah seven years and six months. 
and 33 years over all Israel. So that was a total of 40 and a half years. Now, you know, as a kid, you know, kids will do some silly, crazy things. And uh, that was no different with me. I was probably uh, one of the worst to do do things. So two of my cousins and me were together one night. So I had a real good friend and was going to do a trick on him. So what I did, I took an alcohol seltzer and put it in my mouth. And uh, if you know what it does, it foams. And pretty soon it's going to come out of your mouth. So we did that to my friend and uh, then left him after all the foam came out and after I went back to him I said I told him he, he said oh Lord there's something wrong with you and uh, then I went back to him and uh, he, I told him I said no there's nothing wrong I'm okay no, he said, there's something wrong. He said, you can't foam at the mouth like that and something not be wrong with you. So it took me a long time to convince him the trick that we had we'd pulled on him there. Okay, now, so young people, you know what you can do to create a, <laughs> create a disturbance? David, on two occasions, had the opportunity to kill Saul. First Samuel 24, 1 to 7, in a cave, when he cut off a piece of Saul's robe that in Gedi, and also in the wilderness of Ziph, First Samuel 26, 6 to 12, when David and his servants slipped into Saul's camp. When they, they were all asleep, they were on, all in a deep sleep from the Lord, the scriptures tell us. And he removed Saul's spear in a jug of water. And then he goes up the top of the hill and starts yelling and, uh, and chiding uh, Abner, which was... Saul's uh, military man there that's supposed to protect him. So he was chiding Abner, uh, David was, for not protecting the king, the King Saul. In verse 11, David said, The Lord forbid that I would stretch out my hand against the Lord's anointed. anointed. First Samuel 28, on the evening of Saul's final battle, of course he consults the medium, he consults the witch of Endor, and uh, in verses uh, 11 through 19, uh, well, it, back in Leviticus, verses 20 and 27, under the law of Moses, a medium was to be put to death, but, and Saul knew this, but he went anyway to, uh, to the medium there, he wanted to call up Samuel, and uh, she did call up Samuel. And first thing Samuel said, why have you disturbed me? And he said, I want to know, you know, what's going to happen in, in the battle. Samuel told him, said, tomorrow you and your sons are going to be like me. So he told him, you're going to be killed in battle. And, and of course, they were. Now back to, back to David now. First Samuel 17:33. Saul told David that he was not able to go against the giant and fight with him. In verse, 20, uh, verse 37 of uh, First Samuel 17, David said, "The Lord, who delivered me from the paw of the lion, a paw, paw of the lion, and from the paw of the bear, He will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine." Saul said, "Go, and the Lord be with you." Note that David had already experienced the hand of God as a kid when he was. Uh, shepherding his father's sheep. Now, how could a kid kill a bear and a lion? Not without the help of God, of course. God was with him. For Samuel 11, when David's army was in battle, David stayed home. One evening, when David walked on the roof of his house, he saw a woman bathing. In verse 2 of Second Samuel 11, I said First Samuel, I think it's Second Samuel 11, in verse 2 says, The woman was very beautiful to behold. David sent messengers to take her. And of course, um, he lay with her and she conceived. Her husband was away in battle, actually away in battle, fighting for David. 
in Israel. And uh, David sent for Uriah, her husband, to come home to his wife, Bathsheba, trying to, trying to cover up what he did. But he could not. But he could not. He slept at the king's door. He wouldn't go home to his family. He slept at the king's door. So that was an, something else that uh, would cause David to think about what he had done. Verse 15, he, he wrote a letter to Joab, his commander, to set Uriah in the hottest of the battle and then retreat from him so that he would be killed. And he did die in battle. And, of course, Scriptures tell us that Bathsheba warned, uh, um, mourned over her husband. Second Samuel 12, Then the Lord sent Nathan to David and told him a parable of a rich man and a poor man. The rich man had many flocks and herds. The poor man had one little lamb. And a traveler came to the rich man who refused to take from his own herds to prepare for the man who had come to him, but took the poor little man's little lamb and prepared it for the man who came to him. In verse 5, So David's anger was greatly aroused against the man. He said, As the Lord lives, the man who has done this shall surely die. Then here are the words of Nathan in verse 7, You are the man. You know, we say, you know, someone like a sports figure would say, Mo, he's the man, you know. Well, at this point in time, David, he is the man, but not for anything good. Psalm 51 is David's prayer for forgiveness. Later, David did not have effective control over his own family because of this. Second Samuel 13, 1 14, Ammon uh, raped his half sister, Tamar. Two years later, Absalom avenged um, Tamar by killing Ammon. Second Samuel 13, uh, verses 23 through 29, and also Second Samuel 18 and 17, his son Absalom was killed. And verse 33, David mourns for Absalom. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. It's probably the most famous psalm. Some years ago, a song came out. And where one verse said, You've got to cross that lonesome valley. You've got to cross it by yourself. Nobody else can cross it for you. You've got to cross it by yourself. Verse 4 of Psalm 23 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Even when you walk the valley of the shadow of death, we won't be alone. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. We don't have to walk the valley of the shadow of death alone if we are obedient to God and His Son, Jesus the Christ. A look at David's life and the mistakes he made you know, gives us hope for the forgiveness. God forgave him. He done some bad things. But still, he was a man after God's own heart. David, an ancestor of Jesus the Christ. There are 28 generations from David to Christ. 28 generations. So they are connected. Even Rahab the harlot was in the lineage of Jesus also. I thought it was Interesting. Okay. That's all I have for this morning. The man after God's own heart. You know, we are told in the scriptures that we need to be obedient to, to God and His Word. And you know, the, we need to hear the Word. 
We need to believe the word. We need to repent of our sins. We need to confess Jesus as the Son of God and for his sacrifice and then be buried with him in baptism. If anyone has a need that the church can help you with, please let it be known while we stand and sing. As we do each and every Sunday morning, we come around this table to partake of the Lord's Supper, to remember the sacrifice that was made for us, to remember Christ in Gethsemane, to remember Christ being beaten and being tortured to death. This morning before us, we have the bread that represents Jesus' body that was nailed to that cross. We also have the fruit of the vine that is here that represents the blood that he shed for each and every one of us. And I would caution you right now that he also says that every time you do this, 
do it in remembrance of me. So this morning as we partake of this bread, which is the body, and this fruit of the vine, which is his blood, let's think back in our mind and let's, let's imagine the pain and suffering that he went through for us when he absolutely did not have to. So please bow your heads as we give thanks for the bread. Father, we come before you this morning to thank you for all of the many blessings that you give us, for all the many things we take for granted every day. But Father, especially this morning, we want to come to you to thank you for your son, for Jesus, and for his life on this earth, for the teachings that he gave us. Father, we thank you for the death that he died for us. And Father, we're most thankful for his resurrection and for this plan of salvation that you have given us. Father, we ask that at this time, as we partake of this bread, that we may all partake of it in a way that is well-pleasing to you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Father, let's allow us to continue to thanks for this beautiful day. Thank you for the many blessings. Father, let us remember Christ as he died on the cross of Calvary. Please bless this blood that represents Christ, this fruit of the cup that re represents Christ shed blood on the cross. Allow us to take it in a manner of well pleasing your sight in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.
That concludes the Lord's Supper. We do take this time now as a convenient time to pass the plate to give back part of what we've been given. And I'd like to ask Gene to give thanks for our temporal blessings. Very good lesson, Aaron. It's a good study. Uh, we have a few new prayer requests. Um, Thomas' surgery will be fr this coming Friday um, to get his broken screws repaired or taken out or something. Um, whatever they're doing with that. So uh, continue to pray for him and uh, and pray that that surgery will go well. Uh, Stanley Trotter is going to have to do another surgery um, because they were not able to get all the melanoma. Um, so pray for him and pray for the doctors that are with him that they can uh, get that taken care of. Um, Heather Grose, which is one of mom's friends that she worked with, has been put on place on hospice. So pray for her and her family. Uh, Wendell Davis uh, from... Brookhaven, Mississippi, was in the hospital this past week, but he's doing better and is back home. Uh, he had COVID and an infection in his foot, so con continue to pray that he'll get over those things. And then Shirley Solent has been sick this week, so pray for her um, so that we can have her back in the church with us. And just pray for all these people that you know of that are going through sicknesses, illnesses, disabilities, everything that you can think of, just pray for them. Um, got a lot of events. Uh, so, next w Saturday we'll have the prayer breakfast for the men. And then, next Sunday, there will be a, a lunch served by Team One. And this Sunday, we'll have lunch by the men. We'll have a pizza party next door. So, Stay for that if you can. And then uh, Saturday Saturday the 11th, which is two weeks from now, um, the ladies will have a brunch at Donna's house. And there's a few other uh, things coming up. Just grab a bulletin um, and make plans for each of those. Uh, one that I will mention is our gospel meeting here with Jacob Richburg. He'll be here the 28th through the 30th of April, so uh, try and be here for that. It was good, it was good lessons last year, so uh, we know it's going to be good this year too. And I think that is all that I have. Um, is there anything else that needs to be... Oh, the prayer focus this week, uh, leading up to the gospel meeting, we'll have a... Uh, different prayer focus each week. This week, uh, 
We're asking that you pray with focus and intention. Our prayer focus is in our, congreg- in our, is in our congregation. Please pray that God will start opening and preparing our hearts for the message and purpose he has for us during this meeting. Is there anything other than that that needs to be announced? If not, we'll go ahead and stand. And Brother Steve, will you listen in closing prayer? Heavenly Father, we're grateful to you. Yes, Lord, we're grateful to you for your goodness, your mercy, and your love, and for, for the watch carry over us. We pray that you continue to watch over us and keep us within your love and care and your protection. Help us to be obedient to you in all things as we live our lives each day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.